season. Pro Bowl safety Jamal Adams had some strong words about the team after. Take a listen. I mean, it sucks, man. I mean, we ended the season, what, 4-11? I don't even know what it was, man. 4-12. I mean, it's not, it's not my standard. It's not. It shouldn't be the Jets standard. Um, it has to change. Um, you got to bring players in here, man. It's as simple as that, man. It, it don't. It's not rocket science. There's not. Do you not have enough talent. Really that? No, we don't. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say we have talent. We have a lot of talent on the team, but we don't have a lot of dogs on this team. We put it like that. We don't. We just don't. You know what? You know what a dog is. Just you. You know what it is. Like as simple as that. You talking about effort or like in a little bit of everything, man. Fighting? Come on, man. You you know, you know. All right, we have a former Jet to you know, so go don't ahead. You, you know what a dog but is. But that is exactly Dude, what your biggest complaint about the team has been, right? No, absolutely. I have Jamal on my radio show every Tuesday, and I've been trying to mentor him a little bit, and maybe we'll have some conversations in the offseason. But, you know, it's on Jets management. He, he called him out, and you have $100 million. But it's not about, you know, bringing in guys that get numbers. It's about bringing the right type of character guys. And we talk about dogs as guys that love the game, guys that are paid to play the game for free, Guys that love to compete. They don't have enough guys that love to compete. Yeah, Leonard Williams, great player, good player. I don't know if he's great, but I don't know if he's a dog. You need some dogs out there, some guys. You look at look at some of these teams. Look, you look at, I mean, Prince of Mukamura has become a dog, and he was a bust. You know, you need guys and you need a culture and an environment where guys want to play and they love to come and, to work. And, and not just that, but also uh, situations like uh, Tom Brady's throwing the ball away on third down and you get a terrible roughing the pass yeah, penalty yeah. for no reason in, in a 14-3 game to let the Pats go up 21-3 and basically end it. Very uncanine like <laughs> that right there. So I totally <laughs> see what I followed along and now I get it. So we need more dogs. Do. Time for stories to start your morning, sponsored by Gillette Clear Gel. Here we go. The Chiefs secured the number one seed in the AFC with a win over the Raiders. Patrick Mahomes threw for two touchdowns and joined Peyton Manning as the only quarterbacks to throw for 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards in a season. Nick, did Mahomes lock up the MVP yesterday? If he needed yesterday to lock it up, he did. If in, if. Mahomes doesn't win this award, they should stop giving it out. It's not even close. He's got 1,100 more yards and 18 more touchdowns than Drew Brees. This is a blowout for Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest seasons any quarterback's ever had. Do you understand, this award sometimes can be a lifetime achievement award, and the, and, and the fact that Drew Brees have broke some records as well this year, and their team is in the playoffs, number one seed, it can go either way. And sometimes they may say, hey, young fella, you got to wait a year. It will be wrong, because I think this is a historic season for a guy as a first-time starter. We've never seen this before. Never seen it. But listen, I've never Don't, been surprised. I'm telling you, watch out, man. Okay. It'll, it'll be a The Drew Brees Invitational. <laughs> to the NFC now, the Rams earn the two seed with a 48-32 to win over the San Francisco 49ers. Jared Goff had a nice day, throwing for nearly 200 yards and four touchdowns. Bart, how dangerous is this Rams team now heading into the playoffs? It's Mr. Jekyll and uh, what is it, Mr. Jekyll and Dr. Jekyll Hyde. And yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. yeah, you close, close enough. You yeah. know what I mean? Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute Jekyll and Hyde. I'll stay there. This team lack of defense concerns me and it scares me. The same, you know, concerns I have about the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, because you can run into a team and you throw a bad pick and you get behind and then you have to press and you defensively you can't stop a team in the four minute offense. They're gonna realize that the playoffs is a little bit different. I know they got some experience from last year, but I don't know how far this team can go. Their star left tackle Andrew Whitworth got dinged in this game, something to watch. Here's the thing. If the Rams keep golf upright and give him time, their, their offense is as good as anybody's. They did this without Todd Gurley yesterday. But when golf's under pressure, and by the way, if the Bears win their first playoff game, that's what the match would be. Bears, Rams in the Coliseum, mm. that's a tough matchup for them. It, in perfect circumstances, this is a Super Bowl caliber team. I don't know if the playoffs are going to give them those perfect circumstances. All right, guys, it's been about 12 minutes since the regular season ended, so here come the coaching changes. Both Dirk Cutter and and Todd Bowles were relieved of their duties yesterday. Yeah, they were fired. Jay Glazer reports that up to seven total coaches could be let go by the end of the day. Nick, surprised by these moves? Or is there these two, not at all. We knew Dirk was done unless the Bucks turned it all the way around this year. And Todd Bowles, a lot of people wanted him fired last year. I didn't think he should be fired last year. He was excellent in year one. I thought that bought him at least the full four-year contract. 
But the Jets, I mean, they were terrible this season, and you didn't see enough progression offensively at any point in his tenure. So, no, these two guys, we knew they were going to get fired. I am surprised there's going to be no changes in Jacksonville. That seems like a team that's just running into a brick wall. Well, the worst-kept secret, you know, in the NFL was that Todd Bowles was going to be fired. I think when you think about Dirk Cutter, you know, he's been on the hot seat for the last previous seasons. And where it's different for Todd Bowles, where he doesn't have the personnel or the talent, and I think maybe McCagney should be held accountable for mm -hmm. that as well. Dirk Cutter doesn't have the excuse. They got OJ the Juice Man. They got Mike Evans. They have a number one overall pick. They have the talent, you know, and so it's up to him to make sure that they perform. They went out and got, you know, Pierre Paul, you know, so we knew that he was walking a mile. We knew he was going as well. All right, moving on to the Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger needed to help and a win to make the playoffs. We start with first the Steelers kicker, Matt McCrane, hits the field goal, putting the Steelers up 16-13. That would be the final score. Let's go to the Browns-Ravens now. Browns down to Baker Mayfield finds Jarvis Landry. They would review. It's a catch. Remember, Steelers need Cleveland to win, and they are in. Steelers players, fans watching on the Jumbotron, rooting hard for Baker, but on fourth and ten, Baker gets picked off by C.J. Mosley, and the Ravens win the game. Ravens win the AFC North. That means the Steelers are staying home this year. Here is Steelers quarterback Big Ben on if his team underachieved this season. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the coach. I'm not the owners. I just just try and play quarterback. And, um, you know, I, first thing I'll do is look in the mirror and say I need to play better. And um, I'll always say it starts there. We accept the outcome. Uh, obviously, we, we've had 17 weeks, man, to state a case for ourselves. Um, we stand by our work. Uh, you have to in this business. Um, but I am appreciative of the efforts today. It's, uh, it is what it is. All right, Bart Scott, you can basically put together a mini-series of all the sound bites from the Steelers, <laughs> starting with Ben Roethlisberger this season. What went so wrong for this team down the stretch? Down the stretch, I think it started with the distractions, right? And it started with the distractions with Le'Veon Bell, you know, them deciding not to sign him long term. You know, he was, you know, one of the three Bs. He was part of that, you know, that that nucleus that they were going to, you know, lean on. I think, but when you go back and you say, okay, what really hurt this team? I think Ryan Shazier. You know, people don't realize how important it is in a 3-4 defense to have an impact middle linebacker, a guy that can be the, the core of your defense, right? He's, he's the connection from the front seven to the back end. You saw C.J. Mosley with that tremendous interception. Well, he's playing that, that, that dominant Mike position. You need that if you're going to be an aggressive team. They haven't found a way to replace him, and until they do, they're going to always struggle to be in games because they can't close. They don't have a guy that could be you know, impactful in the run game, but also in the, in the pass game as well. And coming back and going back, and everybody was loving how Connors was playing well. Who who needs Le'Veon? Who needs Le'Veon? Well, what happens is he ran out of gas. He ran yep. into that. He's not a rookie. He ran into that wall. What happened is you asked him to do something he had never been, had never done before. And anybody that's ever ran, anybody that's ever worked out, when you do something for the first time, your body doesn't know how to respond. James Conner's going to be good in the long run, but we don't know how long that this nucleus is going to be together. It's starting to seem like it's a transition between Antonio Brown to Juju Smith, which is what happened when it was Antonio Holmes to, to, Antonio, to Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. But they're going to have to reload and rebuild and figure out how they're going to move forward. And Big Ben is every year. Are we going to have a distraction in the offseason? Is he retiring again? You know, so they're going to have to really come together and figure out how they're going to move forward. Because Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson is the future of that division. And the future is now. And, and that's why this is such a missed opportunity for Pittsburgh. Because the Browns are only going to get better. The Ravens are only going to get better, right? Like, they, yeah. this was the year for Pittsburgh. So I don't know if Le'Veon Bell is going to win on his end of the stare down with Pittsburgh. We won't know that till we see the contract he gets. But I know Pittsburgh lost. I know that this was a squandered season, that whatever their ceiling was with Le'Veon Bell, it dropped a couple notches without him. But that still should have been a playoff team. And so just pick, you asked what happened down the stretch, because they were seven, two, and one. Had to leave. Only the third team under this current playoff format to have that quality of a record through 10 games to not qualify for the postseason. F forget one game. Pick one play that I'm about to list. If it goes differently, they win the division. Against the Broncos, Big Ben's interception. Remember when the nose tackle picked him off? Yeah. And if it wasn't picked off by him, it would have been picked off by the corner against the Broncos? Th this play right here. If this play goes differently, 
they win the division. How about the Chargers? Pick one of 100 plays in the second half defensively. Or the fourth down we're showing you against the Raiders. Or any of these plays against the Saints, be it the fake punt or the, the two fumbles late. Like, any one of those dozen plays goes differently. And the game that's got to kill him is that Chargers game. Yeah. The first 16-point second-half lead squandered in the history of the franchise at home. Wow. They were like 174-0-1 in those situations. You win that game, you're fine. You hold on to a four-point lead against the Raiders, you're fine. And the, the AFC is wide open enough this year yeah. that if they got in... They, ooh, we'd have been, they'd have been playing the Chargers again. We know that is the four seed. Like, who, who knows what would have happened? So they, they blew it a couple times in the preseason with Le'Veon Bell. And I'm not saying they had to give Le'Veon Bell a contract. But maybe that $14 million that was earmarked for him, if you would have just cut, if you would have just had a clean cut from him, yeah. you could have spent it elsewhere. You could have had more depth elsewhere. Because the running game at the end of the year, the final seven weeks of the year, absolutely wore down. They were getting 60% of the production. Yep. They were getting the first 10 weeks. It was too much on Big Ben, and he threw too many critical interceptions. They didn't, they didn't take Le'Veon seriously. They didn't think that he would stay, that he would hold off for an entire year. If they would have believed that he would have done that, and I think hindsight's 2020, if they would have been able to, to look back at it, they would have said, okay, let's trade Le'Veon, get a, a second or third round draft pick, let's dump, his 14, let's dump his $14 million you know, that we have earmarked for him, let's go out and make our team better. Well, I think you, it's far more th this stuff that Nick mentioned, I think, than the distractions, because this is a team that feeds off those distractions. Every year they seem to have them. Every year except this one, they seem to have been okay and made the playoffs. But let's now look to the team that did win it in the AFC North, and that's the Ravens. Lamar Jackson, I mean, he had his doubters out there. Many felt that the, that style of play could not be sustainable. They couldn't win more than a couple games till defenses started figuring him out. Nick, how far can Lamar Jackson and the way that offense is playing take this team? Because we know how the defense is Baltimore's going to play. terrifying. Like, every team in the AFC should be afraid of Baltimore yeah. right now. Now, they could they lose in the first round of the Chargers? Sure, of course, it's playoffs. But I'm telling you, Chiefs fans, Patriots fans, Chargers fans, yeah. you know who they were rooting for yesterday? The Browns. Yes. All of them wanted the Steelers in the tournament instead of this team. Because you used a very important word that we use when talking about Baltimore, sustainable. Lamar's style and the Ravens style is not sustainable for Lamar's career because it's guaranteed he'll get hurt playing that way eventually. Right. There is no guarantee he gets hurt in the next month. Right. It is certainly sustainable for the rest of this season. Like what they are doing right now works. The only reason if this were, if I may mix metaphors for a moment, if this were Madden, and you could put the injury sliders at zero. Yeah. He could play this way for 15 years. <laughs> it's not that he can't play this way because NFL defenses are going to figure it out. He can't play this way because he will get hurt. But that doesn't mean he'll get hurt this month. Right. And as long as their defense is doing this and they're, they're dominating time of possession, they're rushing for 240 a game, <laughs> that is a terrifying team to play. I mean, you look at the time of possession, right, which so allows this number one defense to rest so they can come out and hunt. Fresh. But also it puts pressure on your offense because it feels like, okay, when I get the ball, I have to score. And remember when the Wildcat came into the NFL and it, and it took, took the league by storm? Mm -hmm. You know, how did, how did teams start to, to, to defeat it? Right, they they start saying, you know what? I'm not going to pay attention to any of the receivers, right? Because we know that Ronnie Brown can't throw the football. Right. Well, imagine the Wildcat, which forces you to defend because people don't realize usually advantage defense because it's 11 against 10. 10. Because the quarter it pauses the linebackers, but then also it, it creates gaps and creates seams and vertical seams, not only for Lamar but for Gus Edwards. Who's ever heard of Gus Edwards? Right. Literally He's not. been in the league. He's going to free agency. This is my first time not playing for the Ravens. I didn't know who the hell he was. <laughs> well, and the other thing, I would have loved to see how Vic in his early time with Atlanta did with this defense. One of the things that hurt Vic, it was because Vic was a better passer early on than Lamar is right now. But he had to pass a lot because that team was losing a lot. Yep. It was all, it was Mike Vic, it was the old Mike Vic show the, from the Nike yeah. ads. And so this team, when you have a defense as good as Baltimore and Lamar quietly in the last month, 
oh, it's four touchdowns, no picks. It's a passer rating of around 93. It's only about 170 yards passing a game, but it's enough to threaten you. You can't just act like he's not going to throw the football. This is a dangerous playoff team that in the last seven weeks has lost one game. It was an overtime on the road to the number one seed Chiefs. Yeah. A game they had the Chiefs to fourth, fourth and nine. Fourth and nine, and then fourth and goal from the three. They had them to fourth down twice. They just couldn't close the deal. Like Baltimore right now, we early on we said, oh, they're playing the worst defenses in football. Man, the Chargers ain't the worst defense in football. They did it to them. The Browns aren't the worst defense in football. They did it to them. The, the Ravens are dangerous right now. Ravens and Chargers on Sunday afternoon. We'll see. Coming up. Speaking of dangerous, how dangerous are the Cowboys after their epic ending to the season? That's next on First Things First. And if I'm Jason Garrett, I know it's a playoff week. <laughs> I'm going to go play some craps this week. You're going to be rolling sevens all week.